Hey guys, what's going on? It's Joe from JRUD Studios here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful black walnut slab into a dining table with this slab I got from the guys over at Firewater Sawmill. They're also on YouTube, so make sure to check them out after. I'll leave a link in the comments. Uh, now, this is my first time doing a dining table of this size with a slab. I've done slab projects in the past. My last video, I actually used a white oak slab to make a makeup vanity as a surprise gift for my fiance. Check that video out after if you haven't seen it. Uh, but I was trying to go for as much of the wood out of the slab that I could get without having to do like a live edge river pour or anything like that. I'm going to have to pour some epoxy to fill those couple voids in the center. But other than that, I wanted the wood to be the star here. So the best way to figure out how big of a table I can get from the single slab. I mocked up a little template for the relative dimensions of what I was able to pull with the tape measure. And then just use some chalk to go ahead and trace it out. This will give me a rough idea of where I need to start cutting to cut these live edges off. Uh, but don't worry, I'm gonna use these little pieces for some scrap projects later on. I've already got some little fun ideas in mind. But this is gonna give me a good visual of how big of a table I can get. And then also just make it a lot easier to move this thing around. Once I knew the maximum size I can get from this slab, busted out the track, linked a couple tracks together, and just started making my way around cutting all these edges off. Now I'm doing all these cuts in two passes. I think I could have done it in one, but no reason to stress a perfectly good saw. This thing's been great. No reason for me to abuse it. I want to take care of my tools because I don't know if you know this, but tools are kind of expensive. So just making my way around, cutting all these edges off, getting everything relatively to final dimension. Obviously I'm leaving a little bit of wiggle room because I'm going to be needing to pour some epoxy, dimension it, sand it. Um, and then you never know what you're going to find once you start cutting into a slab or any kind of piece of wood. Now to get the best bond possible between the slab and the epoxy, you really want to go ahead and clean any dirt and debris out of these cracks and voids. You want to clean all your bark off because um, that stuff's just going to fall over, over time. The epoxy is not going to bond to the wood. And eventually when like that, that bark or that dirt debris comes loose, this bond and joint can eventually fail. And I don't want that. This project's for me, so if it's going to happen, I'd rather it happen to me than in the client's home. But like I said, it's just not worth that all that time money invested into doing this. So I spent probably most of an afternoon just cleaning these cracks out, going at it from both sides, using wire wheels, using picks, using you know gouges, all different kinds of stuff to get up in there, using the air compressor to really clean it out. Now this is a super important step you definitely don't want to skimp out on because like I said, it can definitely rear its ugly head later on. So just make sure you spend your time and the important steps like this. Since the slab was all cleaned up, now I just need to go ahead and build our melamine mold. I picked up this sheet down at the big box store. I actually got a pretty good discount since the underside was all chunked up, even though I just ruined my new track saw blade cutting into the concrete. So I guess it balanced out. Now to prep the melamine mold, I'm putting Tyvek tape down. This part probably wasn't necessary because I'm also gonna use mold release spray, but it's my first time doing an epoxy pour this size, let alone a partial epoxy mold. Um, and I just really didn't want any leaks if I could avoid it. So I did a lot of prep work. Now to seal the surface of the slab to prevent staining, I used shellac. I've seen people like Blacktail Studios and stuff do it in the past. I know nowadays a lot of them use like the thin set, high performance epoxies. Didn't have any on me. Um, and I just didn't feel like spending the money. I had the shellac. Now one thing I would do differently next time is instead of just sealing around those areas where the epoxy is going to go, I would just seal this entire slab. It's the shellac's cheap and it's going to save you a lot of work and headache later on and like as i saw when i did this pour the epoxy kind of made a much bigger mess than expected not that it caused any problems um, but it would have saved me a lot of time on the sanding and everything now unfortunately i didn't get the best camera angles to show you guys this but i got silicone and tyvek tape on there i have my partial mold built i sprayed everything with mold release and then I'm laying a really thick bead of caulking around the perimeter, around the seams, around the edges. And then I've also lined the inserts of my partial molds um, just to give myself as many levels of protection as I can to prevent any leaks. And I'm glad I did because later on you might see that I actually had a few, but some of these dams kind of caught it and one of these didn't. But I also had a solution for that that I was prepared for, thankfully, because man, that would have been expensive if it wasn't so. 
needed to free up my workbench for some other stuff I had going, the table base and some other side projects. So brought these over to the sawhorse and then I had to cut away a little notches into the melamine to be able to clamp the melamine to that slab as best I can, just so that way I can get a nice tight bond while the silicone dries, giving me as tight a mold as possible. Like I said, I'm also hitting the edge of that crack again really well. And then I'm also gonna fill in those sides along that filler piece. And I'm gonna come in from underneath and use an 18 gauge brad nail just to hold it in place while it all dries. This worked really well, but I'm definitely glad I did those secondary little beads up the sides. They definitely caught some extra epoxy that would have been all over my floor. But I did an epoxy garage floor, so there you go. It would have been all covered anyway. But again, silicone's cheap, epoxy's not. Lay it on thick, it's gonna come off later. This stuff scrapes right off super easy. So with all of that set, it's time to go ahead and mix it up. Now I'm using some liquid glass, deep pour epoxy resin. This stuff says it can go up to four inches deep in the right environment and temperature. Um, I was only doing, you know, half that, so I felt pretty good about it. Once I mixed everything thoroughly, I came in with some black dye. Now I did make it a point to count the amount of drops that went into the epoxy. So this way, if I had to do partial pours later on to top it off, I knew the exact amount I needed to keep everything consistent as possible. And then one other thing, as I'm applying this epoxy in there, I'm using just a brush to brush it on the sides, help minimize and prevent any air bubbles. We don't want anything to surface later on or get caught in the epoxy. Um, just don't want to deal with any of that. So brushing it in, letting it sit. Now the nice part with the slow pour epoxy is that the bubbles are going to pop themselves. It's not like the high performance stuff where it cures really fast and if there's air bubbles, there's a good chance they're going to go ahead and cure on you. Oh, like I said earlier, I actually ended up getting a leak on the side here. Um, but I, luckily I went and bought this Gorilla Glue, uh, this Gorilla Paste stuff. They also have like that Flex Paste stuff. They're the same price. This is just the one I went for. And I'm glad I had it because man, that thing started leaking quick. After about 18 hours or so, um, it had tacked up pretty good where it wasn't sticking to the knife. Came back, topped it all off. And then for fun, I popped all the bubbles. With all that curing, it was time to go ahead and start working on the base. For the base, I'm just using some eight quarter or two inch thick red oak, because we're gonna dye this black later on. No reason to waste good money on bad wood. So milled everything off camera to save you guys all of that. You guys have seen me do it before. If you have any questions, I'll answer that in the comments. So make sure you leave a comment down below. And then ripped everything down. Now, unfortunately, when I cut into this red oak, there was actually some surprise little bug holes in there. There wasn't any bugs, but at some point there was in there. Um, but I was cutting these things down a little oversized to begin with, so it wasn't a big deal. Debated how I was going to do it, but ultimately just decided to cut the strips thin enough that it eliminated that problem entirely, and I'm glad I did. I think it worked aesthetically well. So here I am, cutting it all off. With everything cut to rough width for your length for my stretchers, and I went ahead and started cutting everything to its final length. So cutting my end pieces and then my long rails as well. Just using the miter gauge on the table saw and relative dimension and keeping everything the exact same. Now I had a lot of ideas as far as what I wanted to do for my table base design. I actually started learning how to 3D model just to try and get some of these ideas out of my head. Um, but ultimately I decided I didn't want anything too crazy. I didn't want anything taken away from this black walnut slab because last time I checked, red oak never beats black walnut. Um, but I didn't want this thing to be totally plain Jane. So I'm going to do some tapered legs. Uh, I'm going to do some chamfers on them. And then I cut these little notches out of the, the long rails on it. I'm sure there's probably a technical term, but I don't know what it is. Uh, so once I had those cut, just clean them up with a block plane, a card scraper, and then came through with the random orbitable sander and cleaned them up pretty quick. It didn't take long. I think it took me, you know, 10 minutes to do all four probably a little bit less than that to be honest um, so super simple process with that now to go ahead and attach this frame I kept it simple just using the domino I'm gonna be double stacking some eight millimeter dominoes now again anywhere I'm using dominoes almost always you can use pocket holes dowels and a lot of time even biscuits depending on the width of your piece so you can do this with the tools you have um, but like I said I invested in the domino a while ago and it absolutely 
speeds all my projects up, and then I can dry fit as many times as I want, which is awesome. Like I said earlier, these legs are gonna have tapers. They're also gonna have some splays. So I'm gonna put a 10 degree splay on them. Um, over at the bandsaw, I'm just roughing them out because then once that's done, we're gonna take them over to the table saw and use a lot more precision than we're using here. So all four legs are first gonna get that 10 degree uh, cut right on the bottom of the feet. And then once all four have those marked at the same, we're gonna use a stop block. We're gonna use our fence, in this case, a one, two, three block to get them all in the same position so they're the exact same length. Now you just want some sort of stop along your fence and then you wanna be able to take it out. So this way that leg can't get pinched between your blade and your fence. It's a super dangerous situation. Definitely wanna avoid it. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know how I like to use these down and dirty tapering jigs. And like I told you guys in that makeup vanity video, I actually went ahead and ordered those toggle clamps, put them to use and I'm glad I did. Those things made this so much easier. So I ran all of those through, and then to make life easier and avoid rounding over any corners, I just clamped all four legs together. So basically any parts that I had two or more of the same, I clamped them all together, used a pencil line to keep the grid going so I kept everything nice and even, and then just knocked out the sanding for this base. To try and get the best results for these half laps to join the legs, I'm gonna use a marking knife to score the wood fibers. Now you can use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade if you don't have a marking knife. You just want something a little bit thinner than a pencil to establish that shoulder. Um, this is gonna give you a lot more accurate results. And then I'm just using the line that I scored with the marking knife, um, butting my square up against it so I can transfer it over to the side. So this way I know which angle I need to cut per half lap because you'll have to do two one direction and two the other and having mirrored parts. Otherwise all your parts will be the same and half your legs will be useless. And then for the height, I just decided to do half the thickness of the leg using some little setup blocks to get that set, but you can use a square and eyeball it. Um, that first shoulder cut, establishing the shoulder, is the most important. For the rest of them, once that's done, you can just start hogging them out. Uh, you can use a dado stack if you have one. But now with everything roughed out and sanded, we just need to go ahead and glue it up. I'm going to glue this up in two stages. So I'm going to glue up the frame, and then I'm going to glue the legs on. As the weather's warming up, anybody who's used Type On 2 and done a big glue up knows that time is of the essence and is stressful. Um, but there's no reason to stress yourself out if you don't need to. Wasn't in a rush with this, this thing's for me, so no deadline. And Type On 2 sets in 30 to 45 minutes and you can keep working with it. Although I think I left this until later that night, came back out. Um, and I'm not clamping the heck out of it, I want it to be nice and flat, just making sure everything's square and putting pressure until I see any gaps close up. So super simple. And then the same thing to repeat for the legs. Just gonna use some glue, rub it in the half flap on that shoulder. Use a little F clamp to hold it in place. Make sure that's all aligned and flush and work my way around. Nothing to it. This is a super strong joint. It's face grain to face grain. And then you also have that shoulder sitting on there. If you wanted, you could definitely send some screws on the inside just to really snug it up or avoid using clamps in general. Um, but this was at the end of the day, so wasn't getting anything else done in the shop. Might as well just let it sit overnight and then set it down to make sure everything was flat. Now to attach the tabletop to this, I'm actually gonna be drilling some holes through the, the runners or stretchers, whatever you wanna call them, of the table. So just marked them out, marked the center of each piece, use a little awl to go ahead and mark them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole with the Forzner bit. I believe I used a three quarter inch Forzner bit to give the machine bolt plenty of room to move around uh, and also recess it down into the base so I didn't have to use dang three inch machine screws. And then once I had all those done, I came back with a three eighths drill bit. Um, this gave my bolts a little bit of wiggle room. So as this thing expands and contracts over the seasons, it has a little bit of flex, but it's also gonna hold it on there. Now, later on, I actually off camera decided to go ahead and add some screws and holes to those middle, so middle stretchers, um, just didn't film it. And then before I went ahead and finished this thing, I uh, added some chamfers to those outside corners of these legs. Wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about it, but I actually liked it overall. Just a subtle little chamfer. And then for the finish for the base, we're keeping it simple. I'm actually using some black latex paint here. I've used it on red oak before, this stuff's really cool because one, super easy to go on, it's super cheap, and it still allows you to see the grain through the paint, which I think is really cool, and it's part of the reason you go with wood, is you wanna be able to see the grain 
you want to be able to see the figure. Um, so just brushed it on. I started with the foam brush, realized that sucked, and then just switched back to a bristle brush. Now this slab had been sitting for about three weeks or so in the mold while I did other stuff and worked on the base, but it was time to go ahead and demold it. That mold release spray made it come out super easy. That partial mold popped right off. And you can see why I had to go ahead and fill so much extra. So like those extra little dams I put ended up saving my butt and preventing any leaks. Um, just had to go ahead and clean those up. Now I used a combination of tools. I tried chiseling. I tried just using aggressive sandpaper. I used this little carbide tip scraper. I used an electric plane. But ultimately what worked best was just using a belt sander and taking my time. And I'm not going aggressive with this, although it looks like it is when I'm sped up. Um, but I'm just trying to get the bulk of it off. And then I'm going to come back with 80 grit and clean it up. I just wanted to get rid of any high spots. You know, all the excess epoxy that I kind of bubbled up in the mold while I was sitting there. And then just taking my time. I spent probably a day and a half just sanding through the grits. And then once I had everything cleaned up and flat again, I went ahead and squared up the edges. So my one side that didn't get any epoxy on it was nice and straight for my initial track saw cut. And then I just pushed this whole thing through the table saw. Probably should have used a track saw. It worked well though. Um, I would still do it again, but I wouldn't do it for any bigger of a slab than this. I think this thing was 29 and 3 8 total width after this cut. Obviously, I didn't want to try and cross cut this thing on my table saw. So track saw came out to finish the final dimensioning of this top. Um, just using the same reference edge for both sides. Everything came out nice and square. Super happy with the yield I was able to get from this one slab. I mean, this thing is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to get it finished. But in order to finish it, you got to sand. And sand I did. I sand for probably a good day and a half. Just going through the grits. And I popped the grain between each grit. And I also made sure to go ahead and wipe everything off. And then also want to check the surface rain imperfection. So I was constantly using the air compressor to go ahead and clean it all off. Uh, but the cool part is each time I got to see more and more of the figure as I went through the grits. Uh, just the grain started really coming to life. Once I got the bottom sanded to 180, I decided to go ahead and align the base and then go mark and drill for my threaded inserts. Now using a series of combination squares, I got the base centered exactly where I wanted it. And then once I lined it up, I decided to use my brad point bit that I used to drill the holes into the base to also mar the surface of the tabletop so I knew exactly where my uh, threaded inserts needed to go. Now I ran the drill bit a little bit, but I'm not trying to drill to depth. Don't try and go crazy. Um, just I just scarred the surface a little bit. This ended up working great. After that, I just moved the base off to the side and then used a little one, two, three block and some blue painter's tape to make sure I'm drilling to the correct depth and also 90 degrees to my surface. I'd had a little portable bench top drill press thing, but it actually broke before I ever got to use it. It fell off my bench. Um, so, hey Rockler, I know you guys just opened the new Charlotte store. If you're looking for a local ambassador to exchange mediocre woodworking for shout outs and tools, you know, let me know. Um, after that, came through with a little countersink bit, countersunk all the holes, so that's where the threaded inserts weren't gonna go ahead and wander or mess anything else up when you started drilling them. And then from there, I went ahead and used my drill on a low setting, um, and I just eased these in. I went in a little bit, backed them out, and just kinda went back and forth till they seated fully. Um, I had a really good fit in these, and they were nice and tight, so I didn't use any adhesive or anything like that but I also didn't want to over torque them and strip the insert out or potentially crack the wood. So just took my time. With all that kind of stuff done, it was time to go ahead and add the edge profile to the underside of the tabletop. I'm using this beefy little 22 and a half degree chamfer bit, again, from Rockler Woodworking. Let me know guys, just saying. Um, I made this in three passes and I'm just showing you the last pass because I think this took me around 10 minutes or so full length of the clip little dramatic drying action on that top as I'm popping the grain between each grit. And then I had to go ahead and fill these little micro bubbles and voids that didn't want to be filled. Some of these, it was easier just to go ahead and gouge out with a little pick or a chisel, come back with some black CA glue. I let it dry naturally uh, and didn't use the activator and then came back and sanded it all away. And that worked really well. 
For the top edge, I just use a little eighth inch round over in my palm router, get all of that cleaned up. That way it was nice and uniform. And then for the last couple grits, I turned all the overhead lighting off and I used some raking light to really get down to the surface and see any imperfections. Now this worked great. Well, it might be silly that I'm out here standing in the dark. I got the best results I could. Now it's time for finish. So for the finish, I'm gonna use half Rubio Monocoat Walnut and half Pure with the accelerator to go ahead and get most out of this slab. Camera cut off during this process, but I used a little trowel to spread it around and then a white scotch bright pad on my orbit sander to really buff it all in, let it soak, and then came back and buffed it off by hand. Now this worked absolutely great. I think the results speak for themselves. And then a week or so from now, once it's fully cured, I'm gonna try the Blacktail Studios N3 Nano Coating. And I'll let you guys know in a different video what I think of that. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making this table and I definitely wanna make some more in the future. Um, but in order for that to happen, I need you guys to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends. Uh, all that is going to help me grow this channel and allow me to make more builds. And then those of you who made it all the way to the end, this week, start your comment with either Live Edge or Dead Edge. This will allow me to know you made it all the way to the end. And if you prefer a natural Live Edge or a machine cut straight edge. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.